Okay. So good afternoon. We're very happy to have you all here today in this online uh, workshop on women entrepreneurship organized by the Laboratory of Industrial and Energy Economics at the School of Chemical Engineering in the National Technical University of Athens. Uh, our uh, lab hosts uh, for the fifth uh, consecutive year uh, this event in the context of a global initiative, uh, the Women Entrepreneurship Week, which involves more than 140 universities uh, across the globe. Studies confirm that women disclose fewer inventions, uh, receive less funding for startups, and are not equally represented in business leadership roles. This year's event focuses on the role of technology transfer offices in empowering women in science and uh, research and presents four innovative knowledge intensive ventures from different sectors of economic activity. We are very honored and pleased to have some exceptionally talented people here with us this evening and we do hope that this will be an interesting and most importantly inspiring um, event especially for our, our students. So let me start by setting the seat uh, for the next 10 minutes or so and present some stylized facts that will show us that there is still a gender gap in research and in innovation activities which impacts entrepreneurial activity as well and while this trend seems to be uh, slowly changing uh, it seems that we have a long way to go to further empower women's participation in research and innovation activities. So I will start uh, sharing my screen now. Panagioti in the Technical problem. Sorry about this. Can you see my screen now? Yes. yes. So uh, I would like to draw your attention uh, to two prominent female figures uh, who were awarded uh, with Nobel Prizes in different fields, economic and medicine, in uh, 2000, uh, in uh, 2023. The first one is the Harvard economic historian Claudia Goldin, who won the 2023 Nobel Economics Prize. Only three women have ever won the Nobel Prize in Economics, and Goldin is one uh, of them, and the first to do so solo, by herself. She was the first woman to receive tenure in the Harvard Economics Department in 1990. Uh, now, why I, I present her? Because her research offers, for the first time, a very comprehensive account of the causes of the deeply rooted wage and labor market inequalities between men and women. Uh, it also shows us how the process of closing uh, the gender gap has been uneven over the course of time, as well as it shows us how the main, source, the main sources of the remaining gender gap. So thanks to her gr groundbreaking research, we now know more about the underlying factors and which barriers may need to be addressed in the future. Another important woman I would like to draw your attention to was, is Kathleen Carico, uh, who along with her uh, colleague Drew Weissman received the 2023 Nobel Prize in Medicine uh, for their groundbreaking uh, findings on mRNA COVID-19 vaccines. Of course, the history of science and invention uh, also includes remarkable women, uh, let's say from Marie Curie and her pioneering research in radio 
uh, radioactivity, but women scientists have historically been denied equal opportunity and they remain underrepresented among uh, investors. Uh, Kathleen uh, Carrico, the, the important uh, is an important case of a very persistent uh, researcher. Uh, as an RNA specialist, specialist, she immigrated from Hungary. Uh, she she's a biochemist to the U.S. in 1985 because funding for her research was no longer available in her institute. And three years. Three years later, she was working as a researcher in the medical school of the University of Pennsylvania. In the 1980s, scientists recognized the huge therapeutic value of synthetic mRNA, but this progress slowly uh, slowed down, especially in the 1990s, because costs were rising and other challenges also arised. Nevertheless, uh, Carico remained very convinced convinced that mRNA could be used to create new therapies. Despite very severe obstacles, uh, including academic skepticism about her work, which uh, of course meant that she did not receive any funding at all. Uh, the motion at work um, and the threat of deportation from the US because she didn't have a green card, she persevered in her research. A turning point at her career came in late 1990s when she met the, her colleague, the immunologist Drew uh, Weissman, and together they created an mRNA, an mRNA based uh, vaccine to um, combat AIDS. Uh, they also created a company and patented their technology in 2005 and eventually licensed it to two biotech companies who are now, which are now very famous, Moderna and BioNTech. Uh, in 2013, this is a very important point, Carico left UPenn. Her academic career wasn't exactly successful, but she wasn't finished. She wanted her work to reach patients, so she decided to join BioNTech, an unknown back then startup uh, firm that had never produced an approved medical product before. She would live in Mainz, Germany uh, for 10 months during the year. And in late 2020, as you all know, the company's mRNA vaccine for COVID-19 became the first such vaccine to hit the market and the rest is history. Um, now, um, I, I'm going to show you some um, uh, stylized facts, as I said before, where we can see that the participation of women in research and STEM fields remain far from parity. Um, these are the latest uh, United Nations global uh, data concerning uh, gender uh, disparities. Um, in uh, 2020, women held only one in three research positions worldwide and only one in five in science held some uh, positions in science, uh, technology, engineering and math. Such low uh, representation is combined with a work environment that is typically male dominated, inflexible and exclusionary, making the field less attractive to women and other underrepresented groups. That means that women miss opportunities in technology and innovation and as a result, miss opportunities also to uh, have some entrepreneurial activity. Uh, also in uh, 2022, inventors listed uh, listed uh, on international patent applications, as we can see here, were five times less likely to be female than male. Um, furthermore, women are two times less likely than men to know how to write a computer program. I'm going to continue with this slide and focus more on women's participation in inventive activity. As we can see here through time, uh, these are data provided by the um, 
um, in, uh, um, the latest EPO EPO's uh, study on women's inventive activity. And as we can see here, at least for the 38 countries that uh, participate in EPO, uh, the, the, this trend the, has steadily changed, but uh, is still far below uh, parity. And um, some uh, uh, more uh, data here shows us on the left hand side that chemistry stands out through time as the technology sector with the highest share of women inventors. The women, the women inventor uh, rates in uh, 20 uh, in um, 2010. Uh, 2019 period, as we can see here, reached over 22%, while the values in other technology uh, sectors ranged from 10% uh, in instruments to uh, almost 5% in mechanical engineering. Uh, on the left-hand side of this slide, we can see uh, an interesting finding which shows that irrespective of the technological field chosen, Patent applications uh, from universities and public research institutes, including uh, hospitals, government agencies, and nonprofit organizations, have a significantly larger share of women inventors than, uh, excuse me, their counterparts in uh, business companies. Uh, Twenty percent compared uh, to ten percent in business companies, and this may reflect uh, women's educational preference in certain uh, sectors such as chemistry and life sciences, as well as the importance of uh, universities and public research organizations among uh, patent applicants in these fields. And it's it's important to say here that it also may uh, show that uh, women's preference for uh, for working at uh, universities and PROs, uh, public research in institutes, because they usually offer less gender biased working and social conditions compared with those of companies. Um, as we have seen from the previous slides, um, there is a uh, a large gender difference in uh, STEM activities and especially uh, in patenting activity. Uh, a gender perspective, of course, is relevant for the design, development and implementation of a research driven innovation. Um, however, a gender perspective is seldom systematic systematically adopted in innovation processes, innovation studies, or even innovation policies. Uh, and it's important that innovation policies have this gender, uh, acquire uh, this uh, gender sensitive approach because uh, women innovators, research entrepreneurs, and so on face a range of barriers. Uh, including inadequate access to financing and capital structures. Uh, firstly, these sectors often require substantial investments. And secondly, women attempting to operate in these sectors may be seen less credible by financial stakeholders and investors. Uh, lack to relevant uh, technical, scientific uh, and general business networks, which is also important because they cannot, these, these networks are essential for them to develop business ideas, meet potential customers, suppliers, and so on. Lack of business training when undertaking technical and scientific studies, presenting entrepreneurship as a possible an achievable employment opportunity for them, missing entrepreneurial uh, skills to start a business, and lack of motivation and role models of innovation, which could send uh, positive messages that women can be successful in these uh, sectors and fields of activities. And last slide, um, policy directions for women innovators and entrepreneurs uh, could uh, include measures to improve, to improve access to finance and specific funding, building uh, of innovation related skills through training, coaching and mentoring, strengthening of innovation culture and networks for them, and establishing gender sensitive innovation strategies and actions by appointing role models that will be inspiring. 
uh, for them to apply for funding and include, uh, of course, uh, gender uh, diversity in national strategies for innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, thank you. Uh, this was my some initial, uh, let's say, um, remarks. Uh, now we should uh, we should move on to our first uh, presenter. I will stop sharing. Uh, our uh, first presenter, who is Agelos uh, Tsakanikas. Uh, this part uh, of our program um, is going to explore whether TTOs can actually influence and empower more women uh, in research and innovation. Agelos Tsakanikas is associate professor. Here is the director of our lab, and he's also head of the technology transfer office at the NTUA. Good. Can you hear? Can, can, you can hear me. You, you can see my presentation, I guess. Yes. Okay. So, um, I will briefly present you um, how what happens in the National Technical University of Athens in terms of technology transfer and how we have uh, organized our uh, work uh, during the last two and a half years uh, in the technology transfer office. Um, there's no specific female perspective in this, uh, apart from the fact that uh, most of our the staff is female in the technology transfer office and uh, uh, some of the spin-offs that have been created have an increased female participation. So, but this is this is also a, a tool that is um, the technology transfer office is a, is, a, is a mechanism that uh, can be used for the support of female entrepreneurship as well and and, and the commercialization of um, uh, research that is happening in our university. So, why we care for that at the type National Tech University of Athens because us, all those that we work here, but those also the guest participants in this panel know that the, the, the National Technical University of Athens is a top European actor in, in, the, in the framework programs. In, in we have done in this database that we keep in our laboratory, uh, social network analysis, and we have seen that apart from the actual numbers of participation and projects, uh, in the FP, in the framework programs from the very first beginning till the horizon now, um, NTUA ranks very high and specifically in terms, not only in, in terms of actual numbers, but also in terms of um, net, the, its network position. And I mean, all the, the, the degree centrality uh, and other uh, metrics that they are used in social network analysis the NTUA ranks high, and this indicates that it has a central position in various of, of all these networks that have been created during the last 30 years, 35 years of, of activity uh, in, 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 in this call. So it is an important actor at the European level. And in most of the cases, all of these projects, they do involve some sort of industrial partners. So they are just it, it, it's obviously because of the nature of uh, NTUA and, and the, the, the fact that this, it, it, it uh, has engineering schools, it represents engineering schools, but there is always a collaboration with, with an industrial partner. So there is room there for um, some um, um, uh, research, uh, development of products and services and things like It's not it, obviously some of these projects do involve basic research, but the collaboration with the industry means that there is a strong um, development phase. There is, a, there is a, a product or a service behind the project. So this indicates that there is a need for the NTUA to exploit this research um, because we have a high research performance in terms of number of papers. We see the usual metrics, citations per paper, participation, in uh, research programs, so number of doctoral students that they are active in the university, but at the same time, in a way, this input indicator doesn't translate in some of the usual output indicators 
which are important in, in, in such metrics, such as the patenting or the spin-off activities. There was zero patenting and spin-off activity in the university, in the, in, the, in, the, in the National Technical University of Athens, which was a little bit strange. There is a significant improvement during the last two years, and obviously this is where I'm going to build on a little bit my presentation. Uh, and, and apart from that, apart from improving your metrics or improving, it is the, the whole issue of managing the intellectual property of the university and of the researchers that they are active here. This is a driving force, as Emilia was saying, for entrepreneurship and innovation in and, and, and regional social and industrial development. So it is not just an issue of protecting your um, your, your your innovation, but actually building on that and managing the intellectual properties, putting some rules, setting setting up some rules in in an environment that it was rather gray up, up to now. Um, so the NTU Technology Transfer Office was re-established, relaunched in in three years ago, uh, and. Um, uh, of course, it was a, it, it it has been uh, initiated back in the 90s uh, to some extent, but it was rather idle. And of course, this group and members of of, of our um, uh, laboratory have always worked in this direction. There was the liaison office with there were some some norms. I mean, with with similar activities like the liaison office or the innovation and entrepreneurship unit. There were efforts actually to do that to do technology transfer and to do some sort of, of IP protection. But all these activities, now we feel that they are incorporated and we try, this is, this is a constant, this is a dynamic process, we're trying to incorporate all these activities that are happening in the university in the technology transfer office. And our vision, of course, is to encourage, to, to commitment of to, to support innovation and entrepreneurial uh, agenda and, and, and support online schools to diffuse the research outcomes and act entrepreneurially uh, and collaborate with uh, businesses and, and, and build new relationships and synergies with innovation and entrepreneurial ecosystem, either locally at the, at the, at the Greek environment or internationally. So we have a twofold um, um, strategy. On one hand, in the internal, to understand what is happening in the in, in all these uh, uh, vast uh, campus that there are a lot of people are working now with the research contracts, they are faculty members, they are um, educational members, but there are a lot of people working in the campus every day and they do research, significant research, which is significant in, 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 in global terms, I mean. Uh, so we need to, to, to identify these research and see how this can come to to the market, some part of it, some part of it, what part of it can be commercialized and come to the market. So uh, on one hand is to do that internally, and on the other hand is to uh, stay in contact with the industry and, and, and uh, show to them what is happening uh, within the boundaries of the, of the university and see how we can bridge the so-called gap between the two worlds. So this is a list of the things that we do, mostly this, if we can, uh, you know, we, we, we do educational programs, we do uh, a lot of mentoring, we do a lot of uh, trying to link, trying to create relationships between our researchers and the industry. Um, yeah, and, and, and as a result of this, we have already some positive, uh, some positive outcomes of this uh, um, of this effort, and this is, of course, the creation of the spin-off companies. I have to say that this was uh, also possible and happened because of the overall legislation at the national level that changed and made some things more clear, and 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 some of the uh, drawbacks or, or or the yeah unclear points that were uh, explained a little better. And there is there is a legislation umbrella that helped us also. Um, uh, in our work. We have already seven spin-offs that have been established and three more additional requests that are under the assessment. So I think by the end of this year, we will have 10 spin-offs in the university. And again, I, I have to say that we had zero spin-offs between before two and three years ago. Huh? 
Um, these are in various fields. Uh, this is just a, a list of the, uh, and, and, and I think we have also invited speakers in this event uh, from one of the, of the, of the spin-offs. They are in the various, uh, we cover a lot of sectors, obviously, and there is also the, the progress in, they, they have not all started at the same time, but they, they are following their own path. And furthermore, on top of this, the university and, and NTUA, from the level of, of, of the top level commitment, we had the top level commitment from the, from, from the dean's office to create the Energy Competence Center, which is also driven by our effort to, by a public call, of course, with public money. When there's public money, there's always an, an extra effort, you know, to, to, to do things. And this is also a spin off that has been created. And, 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 and um, wants to do research and uh, the activities, research in various energy fields. We consider this as a main field and main um, topic that the uh, NTUA should be uh, involved. There is already, there is a participation of 13 members in, uh, uh, in, in, in the capital of this competence center. And we feel that the work that will happen in this competence center is also uh, significant. What we try to do is, as I told you, try to protect the intellectual property. There is a lot of IP in the university. We, the university was not forced, in a way, to protect it. And somehow, uh, you know, we feel that the university loses value of this. But apart from the, the losing value and, and not, not getting some benefits of this research is also an, 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 an issue of... of um, protecting also the researchers uh, in, in, in the university. So there is a process. We have set up a process for the protection of intellectual property, which ha can take the form of patent, but also licensing agreements or other uh, sort of agreements with the university. Uh, we have already some initial patenting activity, um, and, and we have started the patent application uh, procedures. So we hope that this is something that can bring benefit to the university. Uh, furthermore, another action that you may have seen also is the Science Agora. This is the brand, the brand, let's say, of a, of a hub that has been created from the five, from the five, uh, uh, three universities: uh, the, the Athens uh, University of Economics and Business, um, uh, the our university, uh, the um, EPSAE, which is the branch, the research branch of the of the School of the Electrical Department, Athena Research Center, and also the Democritus, these five research institutions and academic institutions that has, have joined forces in order to have a unified face, let's say, a uni interface towards the industry. You know, they don't know small SMEs in Greece. They do not really know who, may, who, who could provide some help to them, whether they could find the research group in Democritus or in OPA, in AWEB, I mean, in NTUA. So, so we feel that we created this hub in order to create synergies from all the universities. We all, each, each institution follows their own rules, but at the same time, we try to develop synergies between these uh, uh, research institutions so they can, they can provide some service to the society, again, to the industrial ecosystem and can provide um, and do this technology transfer. Uh, of course, these efforts were, these also have fueled our efforts to hire people and to have to train people to, to, to staff the technology transfer office. Of course, when there is public money, as you can understand, this is also uh, a, a gives, is a catalyst uh, for, uh, for such efforts. And we have, um, earmarked some, 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 a budget for these efforts, and we hope that in the next programming period, uh, we also will be some funds to support our activities. Um, and okay, I think I discussed about that. It, it, it is an issue of increasing awareness uh, within the university, but also increasing, you need to do efforts to increase the um, uh, awareness also of the industrial ecosystem. So this is what we do. You need to educate people, you need to to, 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 to help people to protect their IP and, and, and help them commercialize the research. These activities, we feel that in the next three years, um, we feel that uh, we can uh, multiply the activities that we have done and we can have some, some significant results. 
Uh, okay, there are. We have in, in in that sense, we have already done some events to uh, publicize to, to, and to advertise our work, of course, and 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 the existence, the, the even the existence of a technology transfer office. Because even now, I have to say that it is not um, visible to some of the groups that they are within the university. We have participated in various efforts that are happening. Uh, around the local ecosystem, we have to be, we have, we are active in this, uh, and we try to be there at every occasion, you know. And also, we run a proof of concept program with a very, with minor, with very little budget, you know. But we did, we did that when we are supporting uh, the proof of concept, the proof of concept process, and we hope uh, that um, uh, we can have more of these proof of concept programs because these have proven that to have. Uh, a significant impact, impact in the research community and other activities as well, train the trainers. And this is something that, as I told you, we plan to um, to uh, increase these activities. Um, obviously, uh, there is no gender issue behind that. I mean, we, we do that in all the, the groups that they are uh, um, reaching out to us to support them. Um, and. Uh, if you haven't visited yet our uh, site, this is something that you should do, and you should do that. Not right now, but after we, we finish this panel, so you can see the activities. And if you want to contact me directly, I'm the heading of this, this, this uh, the transfer office, and I hope I can provide some help to you. Thank you, Emilia Moda. Thank you, Angelos. Uh, are there any questions from uh, the audience? Please. Or we can pick up at the end. I don't know if we finish this session. I don't know. Yes, we can do that. But uh, but okay. if there are some some questions right now. Yes. No. Oh. Okay. Uh, but what what we understood from, you, from your uh, presentation is that at the NTUA we have no. Uh, female, let's say, aspect. We because the the TTO, the, the technology transfer office, is still in its first steps and tries to increase awareness both internally to all researchers, both male and female, in faculty and externally uh, in industry and society in general. So. Uh, Let's move on to our uh, second uh, speaker in this part. Um, it's uh, uh, Varvara Vasilaki. Uh, she is innovation consultant at the Innovation Office of uh, Democritus, which is uh, at the largest uh, research center in, in the country. Uh, Varvara, yeah, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Lopretogiro. It's very nice to be here with you. Uh, it's a great honor to be with you. And thank you for organizing this uh, very important initiative over the last uh, five years. Um, I'm trying to uh, um, share my presentation, but uh, I don't know what's happening. Um, sorry. It's Uh, there's an error message. I don't know if I don't know. Uh, do I have the rights to share? I don't know. Yes, you have. It should be okay. Yes. Okay. Ah, uh, now it's uh, yeah. yeah you Seems probably like... have to quit and start again. It doesn't take time. Uh, we can see, we can see your we can see, presentation. Okay. And is it in a, f a full screen mode or? Yet. No. Oh, I'm sorry for this. Uh, Okay, um, is it okay now or? It's not in, in full, full screen mode yet, but. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Um, uh, 
the bottom is at the right uh, down um, part of the yeah line. It's not working. Ah, I'm so I'm very sorry for that. But uh, can you see the the slides? Is it yes, okay? Yes. So you can now uh, go on like this if you like. Okay. Um, sorry for this. Um. Okay, um, uh, basically, uh, yeah, I, I would like also uh, to say that I'm very pleased also to see Professor Tsakanikas with us in this panel and also to see men um, being participants because, you know, in these events, uh, it's just uh, between women most times uh, sharing uh, their experiences, but there are no men, you know, to, to, to hear us and they have to, to be engaged in, the, in this process. Um, so, I'm Varvara Vasilaki, an innovation consultant, and I work uh, for the innovation office here uh, at Democritus. Um, um, Democritus is the largest, basically, uh, multidisciplinary research center here in the country, and that is uh, evolving into a dynamic uh, European innovation hub. Um, here you can see our five well-established uh, long-running uh, institutes, uh, while we have our six uh, uh, institute, um, uh, and it will be uh, on quantum computing and technologies. Uh, contrary to what people uh, think, Democritus uh, does not really rely on its research on exclusively on physics or uh, nuclear science, uh, but also fosters uh, research on life sciences and health, uh, on materials, on technologies, up to informatics, AI, and robotics. Um, so basically, we're focusing on scientific breakthroughs and advancements in the, these fields uh, that can lead in, to deep uh, tech applications. Um, these fields, uh, these are the fields that where uh, women are less represented normally compared to other um, sci sciences like social sciences, for example. Um, however, uh, here at Democritus, we're not doing that bad uh, when it comes to our uh, staff composition and uh, basically, our female staff are about uh, 40 percent, and we we are a research center with uh, more than 500 researchers, as we can see here. What is uh, really important here is that we do have a local ec innovation ecosystem that further to our research center, uh, it hosts also our technology park, uh, Life Kipos, our technology park, uh, our technology park uh, for which we are very uh, proud of. Um, is it, uh, is it, it is trusted not only by our spin-offs, but also by very innovative companies and startups, as well as established company, uh, companies. For example, we do have the R&D uh, activities of Tesla here. Uh, so basically, it's a, it's a very uh, good place where uh, innovation can, uh, can be uh, a fertile ground, you know, to, to for other people to, to inspire uh, our researchers and also um, companies, they, th they have the opportunity to boost their growth, speak up their growth because they are next to uh, to a research center and research teams with whom they, they collaborate. Um, and our researchers do come closer to the industry and to um, basically blend with a more entrepreneurial uh, spirit. Um, here we see about our um, sources of funding. Um, basically, um, we do have some public funding that, of course, it's uh, for the salaries of the permanent staff and other national sources of funding, but um, we do have a 14% of our funding coming from the private sector and the industry, uh, from research uh, uh, contracts, IP co-development, uh, licensing of our IP and spin-off, uh, royalties from our spin-offs, and other services that our labs uh, do offer, do provide. Uh, competitive grants, we can see that 
they are very important, representing more than 50% of our funding, of our total budget. That is very vital for the financing the, the research that go, go further and mature. And we need to help also uh, women to access uh, this uh, funding. Um, uh, basically, for um, uh, for innovation office, uh, the, um, the other so, uh, sources of funding are based on royalties. Uh, but we do have also Science Agora that Professor Tsakanikas presented uh, just a few minutes ago. Um, that really does provide a valuable financial source for our office and has helped us a lot during the, the last two years to, to build our capacities. And we can see furthermore uh, some activities that we implemented here. So over the last uh, years, uh, our center has, um, has aimed for a very efficient uh, technology transfer to the industry and for the benefit of, uh, of the society. And ha that's how our of innovation office uh, has been established. Uh, we do try to foster a dynamic culture where uh, we try to promote innovation and entrepreneurial thinking about, among the researchers to help them uh, to 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 um, to explore the possibilities of what to do with their important research findings, and we try basically to get the, the technology from the lab to the market, um, and especially uh, for the female. Um, uh, researchers here in the innovation office, uh, our tech transfer team. Uh, well, the, the the gender ratio is quite poor for men, I would say, because we lack of male participation. And basically, we are two female officers, and our head of department, uh, Sofia Magia, who could not join today, and one lawyer who is male. So basically, we are just four people um, when it comes to TTO activities. Uh, so basically, uh, we are women and we take it quite personally and we aim to really support women um, when it comes to, to researchers, but also to entrepreneurs, because we do have entrepreneurs, no, uh, not only through our spin-offs, but also uh, through the companies that they are hosted in our uh, technology park. Um, basically, we're a very large uh, research institute, and we have we do have more than 130 patents granted over the years of our operations, in more than uh, in 25 uh, spin-off established. Um, we can see here some uh, women-led uh, spin-offs, such as uh, Langoware, for example, Nanoplasmas, and EE Innovations. Um, and uh, what is uh, is really important that we do interact with the local, uh, national, and uh, uh, international research and innovation ecosystem. We we do establish strategic uh, partnerships uh, with the industry. Uh, we do support uh, fundraising for research and innovation. For example, the here we can see uh, the EAT, the European Institute for Innovation and Technology. They do have uh, boot camps for women entrepreneurs that we do uh, promote to our uh, researchers. And we try to basically to exploit all these tools that, and mechanisms that are in our hands. Um, we do have a head, which is our uh, digital innovation hub and our giga campus where women entrepreneurs could test their technologies and to use their test facilities. We also uh, host the Diana, Diana Accelerator uh, here of the NATO program. Um, so basically, this is uh, this is very important for us that we do have an ecosystem where uh, research can interact uh, with uh, companies and establish uh, partnerships. Um, here we can see some of our recent uh, collaborations with uh, with the industry for co-development contracts and license agreement. Um, here uh, we can see uh, our staff. Um, there was uh, this Stavros Nyarhos uh, Foundation uh, grant that uh, allowed us to build this international fellowship program. That was an initiative that was implemented uh, for the first time in Greece, and uh, we supported uh, talented uh, uh, young researchers with a strong interest. Uh, basically for applied and industrial uh, research. 
And um, we can see here that the impact um, was very significant, not only for the researchers that came um, came to work with uh, with the industry and to gain some entrepreneurial and, and relevant skills uh, that they're needed, even if they they chose they chose an academic or research um, uh, career. Uh, later, uh, but we can see that they uh, we have uh, been able to say that uh, more than 11 million of euros have been has been uh, have been leveraged uh, through collaborations between uh, our democritus and the industry. Um, so we have made a lot of effort uh, to have a more gender balance in this uh, program, and we can say that more than uh, we had a female representation of more than thirty-five percent, and female researchers uh, came closer to the industry and they gained this valuable experience, and they can transfer this uh, to, to later on to to their to the research center or the academia. And um, this cultivates another mindset um, and it, it paves a, a way, um, it paves the way for, for um, easier commercialization of their research. When it, they come to the lab, they, they invent something and they would like to, 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 to exploit more. Um, um, so basically, um, here, uh, as Professor Tsakanika said, that we joined the, our forces with the, the other uh, four uh, leading Greek uh, academic and research partners. Uh, so we provide a wider uh, range of uh, services and the fields of the business acceleration, capacity building, networking, uh, funding to female uh, researchers. But um, it's it's also very important, as uh, Professor uh, Professor Protogiro said, that um, uh, she had talked about the EPO facts regarding IP uh, and then gender parity. So there's a lot of work to be done, and but it, it's a, it's a it's a field that we uh, we focus on efforts on. Um, furthermore. I, I, Needless to say that education and skills uh, are vital here, but also uh, regarding the proof of concept activity uh, that helps uh, researchers to validate their pro uh, concept. Um, Basically, female researchers can uh, can participate to this program in in our internal uh, held uh, proof of concept program. We do have a female led research team, um, which is uh, and this uh, female researcher is also put in a mentorship program to further enhance her skills uh, related uh, to uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, also, regarding the proof of concept here. Um, Dr. Macarona, who is the, the next speaker, uh, was also engaged in this process in the during committee in in which uh, we we need to say that more there were more men than, uh, women than men in the during committee. And now, as mentors, we have more women than men. Um, And basically, uh, um, here uh, I would like to talk about Empower, which is another uh, initiative within uh, the Science Agora. It is funded through uh, Science Agora. Um, basically, um, it started in the beginning of uh, 2000 of this year and is still uh, running. Uh, it is based on this methodology that we can see here on the left. Uh, we went to the researchers, to the labs, and try to, to get to know them better because, as we said, we are in a very large institute with more than uh, 500 researchers. And um, we assess the maturement of these uh, research pro projects they are on. And, and then we identified their needs. And it's important here to hear the, the female researchers because we can apply different things uh, that they're not in line with uh, the actual needs. Um, then we did, we conducted an analysis of their needs and we built tailor-made capacity building activities uh, that we can see here. For example, we do have the tech transfer deduction. It, 
yeah, sessions. It depends on on the the level of their knowledge and the the skills. For example, the first program is uh, for uh, more basic uh, knowledge uh, about commercialization. The second one is more a bit more advanced. Well, if uh, uh, female researchers have um, um, considered to 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 set their spin off. They can uh, they can be here at the spin of booster, and um, the the tools that uh, basically the the, uh, the tools that they were applied here, uh, they were uh, through workshops and different capacity building activities, uh, simulation exercises, etc. But what was I think the, the the most important thing here, and it's it's worth keeping, it, it was about the mentoring and the individual sessions that female researchers had. For example, uh, we had the case of a senior researcher close to her retirement that had never thought of commercializing that her technology, and now she's taking that very seriously and sees uh, in uh, in contact with uh, potential SNCs. So basically. Um, uh, I think that a human centric approach and put the researcher um, um, in the forefront in um, in the epicenter of these activities are, is very important because every female researcher has different needs and um, our role also uh, when it comes outside the, the research center or the academia is, is quite complicated uh, if you're a mom or uh, a wife or whatever. So um, basically, um, I would like to stress that. In plus, uh, we did run this unwind trans uh, text transfer here that we can see that built the, the capacities of our TTO, of our uh, team. I'm sorry, the, the slides went okay. Um, what that is very important because we uh, we have built our capacities to better serve these uh, uh, female researchers. Uh, here we, we, you can see some preliminary results, but uh, they're not final as um, this is an ongoing process and this has not ended yet. Uh, but we can see that three spin-offs uh, that are to be established do have a female uh, co-founder or founder. More than 30 female researchers build their capacity in innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, themes and uh, more than uh, 20 they built their capacities IP related issues uh, we're talking about individual uh, here sessions not just a workshop um, uh, and they have uh, they have uh, received tailor-made uh, support to to their uh, research needs um, here we you we can see that more uh, about uh, um, 15 female researchers and female lead led teams they have received in depth uh, in depth acceleration services and mentoring and we can see that also uh, one female led research team is about to validate uh, their concepts through our uh, current internal uh, proof of concept um, here is what the key elements that they would like to build upon and that we, we think that they are quite a significant. And for our female researchers, it's quite significant to have access to research funding, resource, resources and opportunities. Um, 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 we think that mentorship is something that we should work on and further. Um, we need to empower women researchers and entrepreneurs. Uh, visibility and recognition uh, is quite important uh, in uh, role models. Um, Networking and collaboration activities. Here we have started an initiative where we put uh, researchers and, and companies together in common events where research present their achievements in their research work in order to, uh, to, to connect with peers and potential uh, collaborators. Uh, data collection and analysis is very important. Uh, we need to track the progress uh, to be able to, to do some improvement later on. Uh, educational activities and workshop uh, are important when it comes to commercialization. Uh, IP is really important, as we said, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship. Um, here, uh, collaboration, of course, uh, we need to benefit from all these uh, uh, 
air ecosystem that is surrounding, uh, surrounding us, surrounding us uh, to leverage resources. Synergies are really important. And there are also other opportunities to, to encourage, to support uh, other uh, women researchers, um, it's uh, it's uh, important to, to uh, for a woman to 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 mentor another woman and to to pass on her knowledge and experience. Uh, of course, of course, having a committee, etc., like the proof of concept committee, as we said. Uh, we talked about the, the, the role models here um, and also uh, the other speakers also uh, um, stressed this because. Um, Role models are important because role models are people like you. If you see someone who is, who has managed to to accomplish something, you can say yes, I, I can be in his or her shoes, um, basically. Uh, so uh, at MIT, they say that uh, they do have this uh, culture that um, they they are so uh, successfully um, and, and people be do build uh, startups and start companies all the time because uh, role models are everywhere and it's not an abstract icon. You can go there and talk to them, and they can sit next to you. Um, so here uh, we do uh, promote uh, women as role models. Uh, for example, uh, here we have Vasiliki, Dr. Redumi, uh, that she's the founder of uh, Langware, um, um, and this company has just um, unlocked um, two uh, million of uh, dollars in the new funding round and new mm -hmm. uh, funding round. And uh, we do have also uh, Dr. Macarona that she will be the next speaker and she will tell us a bit more uh, about her work here at Democritus. Um, Varvara, I'm sorry to interrupt, sorry. but we're running oh. out of time. Okay, I'm and so sorry. Uh, and it, has, uh, uh, it was... Uh, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, could, could you please... Yes, wrap up. And here I would say I would like to to say that uh, we are working with the Gender Equality Committee, and uh, this is uh, this is uh, something that uh, all TT offices can do, and it's uh, it's important uh, to work uh, together to to do to, to more. And uh, see, so this is uh, would be my takeaway message: is that data is needed, and because we need to measure our progress. Otherwise, we cannot improve the situation. Funding, of course, is essential. And also thinking out of the box is needed. What collaborations, what opportunities? And, um, and uh, OK, thank you very much for, for this opportunity. And um, I would like to, uh, to give the floor now to uh, Dr. Macarona. Uh, or would you like to do? Um, Yes, uh, I'm sorry about uh, running out of time. It's, it's just that we are doing a lot of uh, different things. And yes, it's very important to, yes. to show us uh, what you're doing. And it yes. seems that you, you are doing lots of things, lots of different things, empowering women. Uh, so uh, Dr. Eleni Macarona, further to her impressive scientific work with numerous publications and conference participations, has a strong innovation background as being a co-innovator, inventor, sorry, in five patents. And also she is a strong advocate of gender equality issues. So uh, Dr. Macarona, the floor is yours. Uh, <laughs> Good evening. Hello, everyone. Thank you uh, for the kind invitation. I'm quite honored to be here and trying to speak on behalf of the female researchers because it's always very helpful to hear the other side and when they're struggling to understand what innovation is all about. Um, um, I didn't prepare a presentation because I knew I was kind of squeezed in, in the program. Uh, I will try to be as short as possible and try to uh, boil things down to the three very essential points, which have come kind of my own reflection on things. Um, academic entrepreneurship and gender equality issues are very tender to my heart, and I spend a lot of time pondering about them and trying to think about solutions. Because as a scientist, I always need to set the problem to understand it and then trying to find how to deal with it. So, trying to keep things short, as I said, and I promised, I'll try to boil things down to three, three points, just three points. 
And what I have found, even personally, when I tried this journey, um, this entrepreneurial journey, is that the hardest thing to overcome is the mindset. Invention is not innovation. And this is very hard for scientists and researchers to understand. It's one thing to create something in the lab, and it's a different thing to make it to something valuable that people out there would like to buy it or have it. It's very difficult to see how what you have thought and what you have created in the lab can become something that will relieve or create a new need. That's uh, kind of the big bet of all TTOs here. And that's the hardest and most difficult message that people can convey on. Of course, this has nothing to do with gender. It's gender, let's say, independent, but it comes, um, and I think this is where women can offer more in the sense that women have more empathy um, in general. So it might be easier for them to train themselves to think towards these lines and along these lines. Well, how I can create value and create something that people need. The second problem, I think it's kind of, again, a little bit gender independent. It has to do with a broader concept that we face here in Greece. Um, still creating wealth out of inventions is considered slightly immoral. Somehow that it's something incompatible with our academic status. And again, this is a big bet for people to overcome. But it's becoming uh, twice as hard for women because usually women in leadership positions, according to numerous studies, are usually less liked. And this is one of the reasons that they don't get the funding or the attraction from VCs. Um, this is an unconscious bias. Uh, it's the main hurdle in general uh, for women to be assuming leadership positions because instantly um, they become unattractive. They're considered as aggressive or power hungry. So when it comes to creating wealth out of science for a woman, this is twice as hard. They can be perceived as immoral or callous. And again, this is something uh, of a problem of a mindset. As I said, the third point is not so much about a hurdle. Uh, it's about a proposition for the future. Um, in Greece, we have a tremendous tradition. Greek women um, are very industrious. We have to look back into our past to build our future. Traditionally, Greek women, they have been able to overcome uh, poverty. They could create great dishes out of meager resources. And in villages in older time, women would get together and do all the chores and they would take rotations to help each other. It's a great example that we can build upon and even if we look in modern days, the most uh, successful cooperatives with products on the shelves are run entirely by women. And usually these are the ones that survive. So as I promise, I'll be short. Um, my own perspective in all these things is that the biggest bet in terms of translating science into valuable products and encouraging women, it's a mindset journey. It's a transformative journey. and. Um, my suggestion for the future would be that we lean onto people. It has to be very human centric approach and the role of mentoring, as Varvara mentioned. And thank you, Varvara, for um, this very good introduction um, is to focus on people and how a mindset can change, both in male and female. We have to change our perceptions and to understand that um, going into an entrepreneurial activity, it's a transformative journey. Business acumen can be taught and that women are great team builders and we can learn a lot from women of the past in Greece. So, as I said, I was short and I can take any question you might have. Uh, I would like to, to thank uh, both uh, Varvara Vasilaki and uh, Dr. Uh, Macarona for her very uh, useful insights and points based on her experience, long experience in uh, entrepreneurship. Um, I suggest that we uh, keep questions, we, we keep our questions for later because uh, there is a little problem, that's why <laughs> I rushed uh, Varvara to to finish your presentation, and I'm sorry for this. Um, one of our uh, presenters in the second half, because we're a bit 
uh, ahead of time, one of the, our uh, presenters in the second half of the event, Aliki Jovita, who is the CEO of Narratology, is a very, uh, very interesting uh, firm, uh, uh, has to leave at seven o'clock. So if you don't mind, I will uh, give uh, Aliki the floor for the next 10 minutes, please. Yes, I'll be very short. And uh, we mix everything you. up, but I think it's a pity not to show uh, this uh, wonderful uh, uh, venture that we have created along with your co-founder. So, Aliki, okay. the floor is yours. So, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, the change in the program. I'm sorry for the intervention. So I will quickly share my screen and I will be fast. Can you see my screen? Not yet, but yes. Now, great. Yes. I'm putting it full screen. Now, can you see? Yes, yes, everything. Is great. 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 So, thank you very much. Um, we are a narratologist. Um, this is a Greek startup that was founded in 2020 by uh, Natasha Papasoma, my co founder, and me, uh, Aliki Jovita. And actually, it's very great that we are here to talk about it at the National Technical University of Athens because we are alumni during our masters. And this is actually a program, a project that began as a thesis for our masters in the architecture Depart department of culture and digital media. So uh, I will begin. Ah, doesn't turn. Great. Now you see the next slide. Yes, Aliki. You can... Great, great. So uh, we, as I mentioned, we started in 2020 and now we have uh, already created more than 50 multisensory hybrid cultural experiences. We actually do interactive treasure hunts uh, that are, uh, that are uh, done uh, with a mobile app and a platform that you can actually download in your mobile phone. And this allows you to explore the ancient monuments or the urban side of the city uh, with this app. Uh, as you can see, we have a, a gamification framework that has some avatars and has a hero story that takes you along, uh, along, along your journey. Uh, we began in Athens, uh, but now we have expanded all over Greece, like in this islands of Cyclades, in Rhodes, in Crete, and in Thessaloniki. And uh, we are also very happy to have launched our first tour in Europe in Berlin uh, last spring, and we are now expanding to other destinations in Europe. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the framework of the app um, is hybrid. So we actually try to merge the digital realm where, we, where through the gamification, you have the educational aspect, while also the fun element, the interaction, let's say. And our goal is to enhance and augment the physical space with tasting, socializing, and shopping. And all these actions can be made through our app. Here, for example, you can see one of our hybrid treasure hunts, a mythology one that Goddess Athena takes you throughout the neighborhood of um, ancient Greece under the Parthenon Hill. And you can see in the map at your right-hand side, apart from the cultural point of interest, we have uh, also um, put inside also some food stops and some shopping elements so that we actually can provide a holistic approach to the city exploration. Our gamification method uh, and framework is depicted here. You have the character, the mission, which is uh, always like the, the common thread that binds together all the stories of the app. And then we have the challenges that now are multiple choice or input challenges. And then this can be, this will be enhanced with augmented reality or vi even virtual reality elements in the future. And at the end, we have the rewards 
uh, in this play to earn model where you can redeem the points you have gained through different local shops and museum shops. And this is again the framework in the app. So the story, the challenge, the games, and the partnerships we have with different museums, the local arts and crafts shop. Um, also, here are some results from our traction till uh, 22. This is updated in 22. Uh, we can see the demographics that we mostly talk to millennials and Gen Zs. And we also are very happy with the average engagement rate that is almost more than one hour and the 30% conventional rate, which means that a lot of one out of three who comes in touch with their app actually downloads the app and uh, uses it. Uh, our distribution network is with various B2B customers, like also universities and schools and cultural institutions. So we are very happy that we can collaborate with them. But also we have like a global reach through the online OTAs that we partner. Um, we are very happy because we have been supported a lot by the local um, startup ecosystem. And this is how our journey actually began. And we have, uh, we have been uh, awarded by various innovation competitions, as you can see above, and also some, we have won some tourism awards in uh, this year for the product innovation and our partnership with the airport. Here is our team. Uh, as I mentioned, together with Natasha, we are both alumni from the uh, master's degree in the National Technical University in the architecture department. And we are a very multidisciplinary team. As apart from the engineers, we have also a lot of um, content creators that have various backgrounds for archaeology, architecture, arts, and uh, also, of course, um, the, the facilitators that we collaborate so as to expand the tours in different cities. This is our goal for the 2024 year to expand to various destinations in Europe. And this is the hunt we made in Berlin that we launched during a big touristic exhibition. Now that we've shown you where we are now, this is a, a brief story of our journey. We actually began in 2020 during the COVID, that COVID struck out uh, as one of the startups of the Athens Digital Lab. This was the first um, lab of the municipality, so of our municipality. So this actually began as a project for the city of Athens. And uh, this is where the story came up when we applied with Natasha for uh, getting funded a pilot for this. Uh, then came the award from the Digital Gate, which is a, an innovation competition from the airport. Um, and this helped us a lot, you know, to actually evolve the idea. And now we have a partnership with the Athens International Airport where you can lose, uh, use our app and explore all the cultural exhibitions inside the space of the airport and also within the gems at the local shops. Uh, this is also a photo from there. It's been a while, but it's still really vivid in our minds. And of course, a great milestone has been the MIT Enterprise Forum, where we um, studied there. It was like a mini MBA that helped us a lot, like, you know, find all the business model of our company and see how we can actually commercialize and create a product out of this creative project that began, uh, that had begun. And also the next step was really uh, taken by the Capsule T Accelerator. It's an accelerator of the um, National Association of Hotels. And this really helped us during the COVID, you know, like work together. A lot of the mentors were hoteliers or part from the touristic business. So it was very helpful for us to actually have time. They had also time to dedicate to us and we actually created the, the final product together. Uh, finally, we, we, we had our premises at the Egg, the incubator and accelerator of, of Eurobank, where we got a lot of support in also in the business part. And also we are actually working together with Coralia and many other um, institutions, research institutions in various uh, European research programs. And this is how we want to experiment more with our technologies and one, how we can develop more the, um, the VR and AR, AR elements uh, in our company. And uh, finally, uh, also great support is from the People's Trust 
from uh, the Lascaribis Foundation when we got a grant to again support our venture. So as you can see, we have had a lot of support from the local ecosystem and this is why also our company is bootstrapped and uh, we are also uh, like uh, profitable since uh, 2022. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it has been a great support and we have learned a lot from this ecosystem and we really wish that throughout the years this will evolve even more. That's it. I think I've been fast now. Uh, thank you, Eliki. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very interesting uh, venture. Um, you said that you uh, received lots of help from the local startup ecosystem. Yes. Uh, in yes, terms yes. of uh, funding and mentorship, um, mm -hmm. in terms of co-developing your product mm -hmm. and so yes. on. Uh, but what was um, a major challenge that you faced? Uh, the major challenge was actually the, you know, the, the switch from the academic, let's say, world to the out there world and how we can actually, uh, you know, get a project that was our master thesis, our, you know, our hobby, our thing that we like to actually break it down in pieces and see, okay, this is what we have, what's the product, what's the market fit, who are the customers, how we can actually commercialize that. So I think that journey, which is still ongoing, is really the big challenge. And uh, it's uh, been really rewarding. We've learned a lot, but you know, getting out there from our computers out there in the streets with the travelers and giving the app to everyone and testing it out and getting back all the feedback, at least I think this has been the biggest challenge, you know, to not be afraid to get out there and uh, expose yourselves and really believe in the product that actually, you know, has offers uh, somebody, solves a problem for someone. And especially where you are in the creative industry, this is a bit more challenging sometimes. So I believe this was the biggest challenge of all. Uh, but we are really, really happy that uh, um, we found all these great partners and this couldn't have been achieved without this strong support of the, of the local ecosystem. And that really kept us going, you know, especially throughout COVID and these challenging years and for our industry in tourism, it was, it was strange. Great. Are there any other uh, questions from the floor, Ioana? Hello. Hello, Aliki. <laughs> How? Uh, to continue from the previous question, I would like to know if uh, you really faced any challenge relating to the gender issue. Mm. To be honest, uh, we think that because we are a female uh, founded company, 100%. So I think that instead of a challenge until now, that has actually. Um, helped us in a way because we have found a lot of support from female leaders and generally we, we see that you know most of our partners are also females so it's really interesting to see the community that is being built also uh, around all of us and we are really we are really happy about that so I believe that in a way because we are like a really small small percentage in the startup world, only 1%, I think, somewhere around there. Um, it has uh, helped us in a way. But still, uh, apart from the gender issue, also the age issue, you know, sometimes when you have to work with, um, you know, traditional businessmen, also tourism is a very traditional business. So when you sit down with uh, uh, office owners that have, their business up and running for like 40 years or a lifetime, it's difficult to build the trust and to actually, you know, say that, okay, we can partner. But uh, I think that, you know, being consistent and being out there and showing that uh, you are really evolving from a startup to a rigid company, that's the goal, can, uh, can really help this and change this, I think. 
Are there any other questions uh, from the audience? Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. No. So, uh, thank you uh, very much, Aliki, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. In your venture. Thank you. Thank you very much. And for, thank you for the invitation. It's, a, it's an honor and we'd be happy to attend any more even physical events in the future. We're really happy to, to yes. be part of this community. So thank you everyone. Thank you for uh, changing the program and uh, we see you again soon. Thank you, Aliki. Thank you. So uh, we will go back to the first part of the program and I would um, I would say that Eleni Michea presents um, here uh, what uh, they do at the University of Peloponnese, and then we take all questions together at the end. So Eleni is a project manager at the Entrepreneurship Hub of the University of uh, Peloponnese, and uh, she is also a chemical engineering. Uh, she graduated from our department. So, Eleni, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Emilia, for the introduction and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's always a pleasure to participate in uh, these events. I think it's the fourth consecutive year that we have, uh, that I have been participating in this event and I'm very uh, excited every time for this. Um, just before I start with my presentation, I would like to point out that, uh, uh, and just to connect with uh, the panel, um, most of our uh, staff in the University of the Peloponnese and the University of Patras are as well uh, women, as Professor Tsekanika said about the Technical University of Athens and uh, Ms. Vasilaki. So I think uh, there is a pattern here, maybe, and maybe we can leave it as a positive remark in this panel that there is very much uh, a pretty high participation of women in uh, this uh, field. Eleni, we can't uh, hear you very well. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, maybe your mic. No. Maybe I can speak. You can hear me now better. It's close to. Yes. Okay. So uh, thank you. Just keep it close here. Uh, so, uh, as I said, we have a lot of women uh, in uh, our department uh, in the technology transfer unit and the entrepreneurship hub. So, there is, I think, a pattern here in all the units that the department is uh, uh, working there. I think that is uh, pretty interesting. No, no, Eleni, we cannot hear you. We have to, to change either your, your yeah, headphones okay, or, just... or use the mic of the laptop. Yeah, just give me. Can you hear me now better? Yes. No, okay. Yes. Yes. So uh, you missed everything I said. No, no, <laughs> Should we I start over? you can continue from where you stopped. Okay, okay. So uh, now I think you can see also my screen. Okay. So um as I said, I want to present the steps that we have uh, made in the University of the Peloponnese uh, the last year in terms of technology transfer and uh, women entrepreneurship. So um, the two initiatives that I would like to talk about is, of course, the Entrepreneurship Hub, as well as the Technology Transfer Unit. Um, I would like to point out that the um, University of Peloponnese is new in uh, this field. Uh, these units uh, were founded uh, last year, so uh, it's our first steps in the field of innovation and technology transfer. Uh, so uh, we have a um, small amount of data to begin with and even fewer in the field of women entrepreneurship, but uh, I have collected some results that I think are interested in the field. Um, so uh, to separate to have a, you know, separate the, these units, the entrepreneurship hub uh, aims to cultivate innovative ideas. And then the technology transfer unit is for the development of spin-offs and the exploitation of research. So, um, in order to uh, motivate the academic community and develop uh, innovation and develop a culture of innovation in the university, uh, we have the three pillars of actions. 
First of all, our actions to cultivate innovation. Then we have mentoring coaching sessions for more mature companies. And then some business growth actions with our, which are to disseminate the results and maybe network and uh, raise uh, funding. So these are the three pillars that we are working on. Uh, we have some facilities in Tripoli and uh, which are open for our students and researchers to use for workshops or uh, meetings or for our staff to work there. Uh, so uh, there it's a co-working space that it is used by all of the university. Our target group uh, is, of course, our students, undergraduate and postgraduate students, as well as young researchers and uh, the whole uh, the wider academic community of the University of uh, Peloponnese. So uh, now, as I said before, these are our three pillars of actions. We have some innovation contests, seminars, and visit to startups. Um, today, actually, we had an innovation contest. I'm in Kalamata right now for that reason. Uh, so today we had the innovation contest about agri-food. Um, also, we have the mentoring and coaching uh, session, uh, which we have developed a di diagnostic process in order to match the startup companies with uh, mentors that uh, are um, uh, assigned for their needs, based on their needs. So it is actually a methodology that we uh, exchange with the National Technical University of Athens because uh, our staff has worked in uh, previous incubators in uh, like Invent ICT and Tepino. So it's a methodology that we have uh, gained from uh, the Technical University and applied in the University of the Peloponnese. So we can see here the, the connection. Um, and last, we have the business growth activities where, as I said before, we are uh, trying to do a bit of networking with uh, other ecosystems and provide financing opportunity for the teams. Uh, now I'd like to move on to some of our actions and some uh, statistics that uh, we have uh, collected. Uh, the first action that we developed was an innovation contest. It started in May this year and it's set to end in uh, November. Uh, the topics that uh, this uh, contest uh, faced was uh, the agri-food sector and energy sector. Um, here we can see that from all the participants, 26% of them were women. I think that is in correlation with the facts that uh, Ms. Emilia provided us in the beginning, that one in three uh, researchers are women. So I can see that uh, the theory applies with the uh, practices here. So yes, that's the actual statistic of uh, um, the innovation contest. Uh, what is important, though, is that from the, the, the um, teams that participate in the team, in the competition, 27% have a woman as a team leader, which I think that's uh, something important uh, in uh, that uh, area. Uh, another action that we developed the past months were some innovation seminars. We can see here that the percentages are higher. We reach 40% participation of women in these seminars, which is, I think, a very good percentage for our first steps in the innovation in the University of the Peloponnese. And what is, I think, pretty exceptional is that the investment game, we had over 70% of women participating, and it was the most technical um, in the seminar that we had. So um, I think that is in correlation with the um, departments in Kalamata, where uh, we have more women and more active women here. So that's why I think that that's uh, the highest uh, percentage, which is very positive, I think, um, for to, today. Uh, another action that we developed was a visit to the Lavrion Technology Park. Uh, there we had uh, over 70 participants from uh, the departments of Kalamata, Tripoli and Patras. Um, the um, students had the opportunity to visit the park and uh, see why is it important to have uh, these parks. Um, as Lefkipos was presented before, why it is important to have these parks uh, in operating in Greece. And also to um, be in contact with spin-offs and startups. And also we, the staff of the uh, hub, had the opportunity to speak with spin-offs and exchange knowledge and see the difficulties they faced and maybe um, bring them back to our uh, technology transfer unit and see how we can um, manage to overcome these uh, difficulties. So here the percentages are again 40% uh, women and 60% men. It's, I think, the statistic that applies in most of our actions uh, so far. 
Uh, we want to make it an equal percentage. We can see that in the departments of Kalamada, we had the participation of 50%. That's exactly quality. So that's why we are uh, we are happy about uh, this uh, specific uh, percentage. And uh, it's our goal to have uh, that uh, percentage in our actions. Uh, another one I would like to present is the student conference we had in collaboration with the Department of Accounting and Finance. Uh, that uh, conference was very important because we had the opportunity to um, uh, present some uh, PhDs and 32% um, uh, of the presenters were women. Uh, also, uh, again, in coloration, coloration with the facts that were presented in the beginning. And also 40% of the participants, again, are uh, women in total of 120 participants. Uh, now, moving on to our technology transfer unit, as I said, uh, it's a newly found unit in the University of the Peloponnese and uh, it started in uh, November 2022. So the first thing that we had to do was uh, to develop a framework for our actions and uh, in order to be able to provide the um, uh, services to the spin-offs and researchers. So uh, we managed to prepare a policy for intellectual property, for the valorization of uh, research, for conflicts, also develop our framework and um, all the operation plan, organizational charts, everything that uh, had to be prepared in order to be ready to receive uh, spin-offs. So this uh, process ended, uh, I think, on April 2023. So uh, we started doing actions after that. Uh, so it, I think it's pretty soon to um, present any, any result from uh, this uh, activity. Uh, but what we did, the first thing we did was to collaborate with the University of Patras. Uh, so we have a joint technology transfer unit. Our aim here is to develop seven spin-offs and at least 20 application of patents. And uh, right now we are working together in uh, patent application processes and the daily operation of both offices in order to, um, um, to motivate researchers and uh, raise awareness about the technology transfer uh, in uh, both of the universities. Um, so uh, an action that we are uh, developing right now is the Patras IQ conference. It's uh, on November, I think it's 25th of November. So we're trying to have um, a, a there a, a, to bring researchers there to present their ideas. I think we'll have some uh, results there. But as I said, it's a um, very preliminary stage right now. Uh, we cannot see if the women participants are more or fewer than men participants, but um, it's something that we are uh, uh, that we are looking for. It, it's in our KPIs. So I think by the end of the program, we'll have some information uh, about uh, that. So uh, what are our goals and next steps in both of these uh, units? First of all, we have set a program and we have some uh, steady seminars that we do with uh, the, our students. So now we want to organize some more focused seminars on women entrepreneurship. This is our next goal in collaboration with organizations that uh, operate in the area and are, um, uh, are running on women entrepreneurship. Um, we made uh, contact with an organization that is running a coding ha hackathon uh, called Coding Biz which is aiming for women in the region of Peloponnese to um, train them on coding and uh, help them gain hard skills on coding. So I think that it will be our next actions to make uh, that happen. Also, another goal is to um, strengthen the link between these units because the entrepreneurship hub cultivates innovation and then these uh, innovative teams can become the um, uh, can pass on to the technology transfer unit and become spin-offs. So we want to strengthen uh, this link between the units. And of course, to um, network with uh, the ecosystem in Greece, with other TTOs and other uh, offices uh, that can help us uh, gain experience and exchange some good practices. And of course, uh, gain experience from uh, ecosystems in uh, Europe. So I think I was brief <laughs> in order to keep time. And uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to present and I, I'm open for any question. Thank you very much, Eleni. You gave us a comprehensive picture of what happens in Peloponnese. And thank you for trying to incorporate numbers in your presentation regarding women. So uh, do we have any questions from the floor, please, regarding uh, 
the first part of the program and the role of TDOs in empowering women or general questions regarding TTOs and promotion of innovation research. Nobody. Um, what I would like to, to say, uh, having heard um, all presentations, is that um, the reasons uh, behind the, the shortage of women in commercialization roles in general um, are very much complex and systemic and solutions are not uh, easy to, to find. Um, but uh, from what I can see, uh, there are different uh, stages of, um, of programs, progress between institutions. For example, uh, from what uh, Varvara showed us uh, in Democritus, they have uh, they, they are in the process of undertaking several, uh, let's say, actions to uh, support women entrepreneurship. Uh, while at the NTUA, we're still in our first steps. In the University of Peloponnese, they are, uh, pro they, they are um, making uh, some uh, effort to develop uh, actions and um, uh, Varvara, from your um, from your experience, uh, what would you say is the most important uh, um, the most among the most important things that one could do to encourage women innovators? For example, funding, develop a community of women innovators promote confidence building, offer training, what? Um, basically, I, I would like to say that um, I, I, I don't want to see to, uh, to the gender thing uh, really um, in one sense uh, that I would like to see gender mainstream being mainstreamed in all single act, in all our actions and activities, and always when we design a, an activity to involve engage women, to to uh, to think about women, what the, what are the needs? So basically, I would like to see it incorporated and integrated in our uh, activities and um, to change our mindset and to have a gender lens uh, throughout our work, even if we are researchers or if, we're, if we are at the DDT office, I think it's important, you know, to, to incorporate and integrate it in our work. Um, and I would say that uh, what I emphasize also is uh, the, the role of role, uh, role models, and I really believe in them. And I think that if you see a woman and you see that she had succeeded and she had she has two children, <laughs> you know, back home and she has so many roles, you know, and so many balls, you know, to jungle with, uh, you uh, somehow you um, you say, yes, maybe I can do it. And it's 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 nice for these women to to inspire the others and to to be able to share their experiences in events like that are really important for me, uh, from, from my point of view. Um, but it's also nice to engage men in this, in these events, I would say, but because, you know, they have to be involved and they can change things And normally, you know, sometimes they do have managerial positions and they can drive decision making. Um, so basically, yes, I would like to see gender lens to every, <laughs> to all our activities. Uh, thank you, thank Arvara. You. Any other questions, comments? Yanis? Yes. First of all, I would like to congratulate uh, 
Emilia and the organizers and also the participants because uh, we have heard some very interesting things and uh, good news that uh, we have uh, a progress certainly in research but we still need more uh, women or other uh, uh, or men to to, to to form somehow teams groups that they can uh, somehow con uh, combine different skills uh, and in this respect i believe that uh, uh, also uh, of course the gender issue is very important and as emilia explained very well it is uh, uh, characteristic that the nobel prize went to a woman who is uh, exactly uh, spent all her uh, life and her research in order to show uh, what was the problem. Uh, but on the other side, or, or additionally, we can have also mixed groups because uh, uh, at least from uh, our um, long uh, experience in universities, technical universities or in other places in Greece and outside, uh, usually uh, 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 the, a woman has uh, some, uh, let's say, skills that uh, the men do not have and vice versa. So perhaps this can also in, in some, uh, can uh, uh, improve uh, the quality and the quantity of the, of the work. Uh, the other thing is the role models. I am absolutely endorsing this uh, concept of role models. Uh, because people uh, uh, learn and uh, think not only through reading or writing, but also through uh, observing uh, things uh, as they move, and especially in, uh, in the, the university and before people go uh, complete their studies and want to, to move to the um, labor market, uh, it is very important to um, see other people uh, that they appreciate or they uh, like that uh, uh, can uh, inspire them. Then there are also the very important thing which I, I didn't hear, hear, hear it very much, which is the, uh, the model that at least our group in, uh, in, at the Techni National Technical University of Athens, we have uh, been applying it for many years. Uh, which was uh, also a, a model that uh, other universities, technical universities in Europe uh, applied, which is the model of the individualized coaching and mentoring. Uh, the, the thing is not just to hear some, which is of course uh, very interesting to have some uh, uh, courses, to hear some people that are uh, uh, coming from industry or other places, etc. Uh, but uh, the crucial thing is that uh, the group or a team uh, needs somebody to, to coach them and then to, for example, to, the mentor can have a role uh, of facilitator for them when we, they have need to have a, somebody uh, outside the, 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 the training. Uh, and this is very important. I believe without this model, not many things can be at least uh, uh, in, in the, this transformation and conversion program. And uh, that's it. I hope all the best. And I hope that we need a network from different universities uh, to, to have a communication and perhaps to at the end to have an annual, uh, let's say, let's say call it um, uh, an annual event that uh, this exchange take place by also inviting people also from industry or from other universities or even from Europe. So uh, yeah. good luck and all the best. Olivia also has a question and then Varvara can respond. Hello. Um, first of all, congratulations to everybody so far. The, the, um, the presentations have been really useful to somebody like myself who is not in the uh, a Greek academia, so I don't really know what the, the processes are. Um, so yeah, I learned a lot of things, and I'm, I'm, I'm I was really, really interested about the, um, um, the, 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 the technology transfer offices. Uh, 
that I didn't know that they exist in so many uh, places and that, you know, young people and uh, energetic people are, are uh, in um, are leading these uh, these things. But I have a question about um, actually the question it doesn't doesn't only come from me. Uh, I I I am a, a mentor at um, Women Mentorship uh, com, um, Organization, Women on Top. Maybe some of you have heard yes. about it. Um, I I had already four young women that came from uh, directly from Greek universities and they were trying to do their their first steps in the industry so their um their concern was how do they get in touch easily um during university time uh, with the industry like of course, of course, with a with 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 a system now in place, they can do it easily. Um, so you provide you provide the platform for for this for this to happen. But my question is, how does the industry get in touch with students? Like, is, is there any um, anything in place so that somebody from the industry can? Um, Come and speak to your students, find things in common, collaborate and learn from 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 students. Something like, for example, in the UK, you would have the knowledge uh, transfer partnerships, which is a, a three way partnership between uh, academia, um, the uh, business and um, and uh, a graduate, like a highly qualified graduate. So it would be it would be this. Is there something in place for that? Like, how do we find students who could eventually be our collaborators or people who would um, work with us. Angelos, would you like to respond to this? This is something that, that, that we do. I mean, we do invite people from industry to provide seminars to um, either the context of specific courses that we have or um, in, 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 in general terms, and, and this is something that this laboratory has a tradition. I mean, 20 years ago, before even all these were, uh, you know, a hype or, or, or a lot of buzz, it was not a buzzword, we were doing that. I mean, we were inviting people uh, from the industry, uh, not just not just for, 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 for the students to see career paths or, or, or what they have done in their um, uh, yes, a career, but uh, yeah, in a way to create uh, role models for them and 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 to 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 make them uh, a little bit closer to the market, eh? uh, to the to the to the labor market. I mean, uh, now all these things have been more uh, are more well organized. One good thing of the pandemic crisis is the fact that actually we had you know we were focused that we have to do that uh, through face to face, but now through these all these solutions that have been developed, it is a possibility to invite a lot more people and 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 even, you know, more prestigious people that they were not uh, able to come uh, in, in in another context. So so this is something that we do. Um, yeah. Okay. And a uh, last comment from Avara, maybe. Yes, that, that's very short uh, to previous um, um, participants. Professor Kazulogiru. Yes. Professor Kazulogiru. Um, um, we missed to, to, to mention that we have uh, an event on the 8th of uh, November where we will be showcasing some uh, some results of our Science, science Agora uh, project. Um, so basically where uh, we will be very happy to, you know, to have you there and I'm sure that uh, prof uh, Professor Ivan Protogero can send you an invitation. That will be on the 8th of uh, November, the Science Agora event. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Barbara. So we should move on uh, with our next uh, speaker, who is uh, Sofia Papadaki, uh, co founder uh, of Princess, which is one of the first spin off companies from NTUA. And uh, uh, Sophie is also a senior researcher here at the School of Chemical Engineering. Thank you, Sophia, for your patience. <laughs> no worries. Uh, it is uh, such an interesting uh, conversation that uh, uh, um, 
uh, gave us uh, such feedback and such uh, uh, hope about uh, the new landscape. Uh, about women in uh, innovation and uh, also uh, in uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, can you see my screen? Not yet. Not yet. Why is that? It uh, shows that it's connecting. Oh. Yes. Now, maybe? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. So, uh, uh, as uh, Emilia said before, I'm a co-founder of uh, Princess. Uh, our motto is uh, Process, Innovation and Sustainability. Princess is uh, one of the first spin-offs of uh, National Technical University of Athens. And our aim is uh, to bring the knowledge that we gain from EU-funded and uh, national-funded projects to the broader audience and uh, to Greek industry, creating, uh, create, creating innovative tools, uh, services and products. And we uh, aim to revolutionize the way that uh, we approach the food production and uh, consumption. Uh, we work uh, in the uh, agri-food sector mainly. Uh, we work on the development of uh, new products and practices and uh, innovation technologies uh, that can help uh, uh, Greek uh, agri-food uh, uh, industries and especially uh, SMEs to be competitive in both national and international uh, markets. Uh, we uh, work on upgra upgrading existing technologies uh, and uh, business models. Uh, and also, uh, we are trying to uh, start uh, collaborations uh, that uh, would be more effective between uh, academia uh, and the industry uh, since um, there is uh, a gap for, uh, from uh, the project to the final products, it is very difficult from uh, a project to bring at the end a final product ready to be in market. And uh, this is something that uh, with uh, the spin-off uh, we can uh, uh, handle it. So we are uh, uh, committed uh, in a global partnership and uh, uh, we focus, uh, as I said, uh, mainly on the uh, food sector, but also in pharmaceutical, uh, cosmetic industry, bio industry. Uh, our um, uh, main scope is uh, the eco-innovation, offering uh, life cycle assessment, feasibility studies, and also participating in uh, scientific research uh, projects. Uh, our team is uh, a woman team. Uh, it is uh, um, uh, we are uh, three uh, graduate graduates from uh, National Technical University of uh, Athens with uh, different uh, uh, disciplines uh, uh, from uh, uh, engineering, uh, chemistry, and business. Uh, Professor Magdalene Krokida is. Uh, uh, the person that started uh, this idea and uh, through her experience and great work at the Laboratory of uh, Process Analysis and Design uh, at School of Chemical Engineering at NTUA and her uh, extensive work and experience in uh, design and development of functional foods, uh, optimization of physical processes and uh, determination of uh, basic processes of foods uh, and her great uh, experience through the participation in uh, more than 50 uh, uh, EU-funded and national-funded projects. Uh, we start this uh, endeavor. Uh, me, uh, Sofia Papadaki, that I'm a chemical engineer from National Technical University of Athens and uh, master in uh, organization and management of industrial system and PhD on the scientific area of integrated processes for holistic biomass valorization and uh, the participation of uh, Dr. Aspasiev Timiadou, that she's a researcher at uh, Elgo Dimitra, 
She's uh, an agronomist and also civil engineer, graduated from NTUA. Uh, we have uh, start uh, this uh, spin-off. Uh, we are very dedicated uh, to this and uh, to, the to the success of this uh, company. And uh, uh, the most important is uh, to say that uh, without uh, the support of uh, the TTO from uh, NTUA, this could not uh, have been uh, uh, happened. Uh, Princess uh, is uh, a bridge, as I said. We are trying to bridge the gap between the research and the tertiary. And uh, uh, can you hear me? Ah, sorry. And uh, our aim is to develop uh, creative and innovative uh, solutions. Why women? Princess was founded uh, with the goal of empowering women in the uh, tech uh, industry. We believe strongly uh, that uh, women have uh, a unique uh, perspective and uh, skill set to bring uh, innovation and success to businesses. And uh, our team is uh, made up, as uh, you saw previously, with uh, uh, motivated uh, and passionate uh, women that uh, would like to bring a difference in the Greek uh, industry. The challenges and opportunities in the Greek ecosystem, as uh, we have uh, faced it uh, up to now, is the limited access to funding and investment opportunities, the bureaucracy, and also the lack of well-established startup uh, culture. But there are still some uh, opportunities uh, that are unique in the Greek uh, uh, ecosystem, like uh, the access to a highly educated, skilled workforce. The workforce that uh, comes from our universities is uh, 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 of a very high level. There is supportive uh, government policies and uh, initiatives to promote entrepreneurship and innovation, and also the growing interest from international investors and venture uh, uh, capitals. So, uh, as uh, the Greek ecosystem uh, regarding emerging businesses, we saw that uh, mainly uh, focuses on healthcare technology, uh, uh, fine tech startups, sustainability and green technology, and the area that uh, we uh, work on about agri-food uh, innovations uh, that can uh, uh, start uh, uh, from uh, the precision farming uh, to smart distribution, to consumer policy, to the final uh, uh, valorization of uh, any kind of uh, agri-food sector uh, byproducts. And uh, the challenges, uh, as I said before, is uh, mainly uh, the difficulty in scaling and uh, to expanding beyond uh, the local uh, uh, market. TTO support from NDUA support uh, uh, Princess uh, for the for, uh, from the first uh, day, uh, they help us to identify, protect, and uh, commercialize the intellectual property uh, of uh, our uh, spin-off. Uh, they provide the support uh, uh, to the researchers, like uh, and like we are and uh, that we have uh, innovative uh, ideas that we would like to, to, to transform into successful businesses. Uh, they give us uh, guidance about uh, licensing agreements, the, uh, how to make uh, the patent applic uh, applications, to develop, to participate in networking event events in order to find uh, funding opportunities. Uh, the role was uh, critical, and uh, uh, we are very thankful uh, about uh, their commitment and uh, support. Uh, our vision is uh, to empower women in the field of entrepreneurship and technology. Uh, we believe uh, that uh, we can uh, act uh, as uh, 
a successful exa uh, example of uh, uh, women driven endeavor and uh, many other could uh, follow us and it is important that we are very active uh, still in the academia and in our school so i think that uh, we are going to be an example uh, for the young uh, students uh, that uh, we have to follow their dream and uh, try uh, to uh, create their own uh, endeavors uh, up to now uh, Prince Suspinov uh, is uh, in the, actually in the second year of uh, uh, activity and we already run uh, successfully industrial, um, individual industrial uh, research uh, contracts with uh, uh, three very big uh, companies and also we have uh, uh, gain a uh, fund uh, from uh, European uh, Union uh, under the frame of Horizon Europe uh, research uh, project. But we're still uh, uh, looking for investments and uh, funding opportunities and uh, uh, new collaborations. So uh, our next step uh, include also the expansion uh, uh, of uh, our technologies in a product line in order to develop uh, products that directly uh, address to the Greek and international uh, markets. This is our next step, apart from the provision of services and uh, uh, of uh, uh, the implementation of research, is uh, to start to have our own uh, product uh, line. So uh, this is uh, more or less uh, from uh, uh, my side. Uh, one thing that I would like to mention uh, is that uh, in the first uh, contract that, that we had uh, with an industry, uh, they have been a little bit reluctant when they saw that uh, um, our company is uh, and our team is uh, uh, is created only from uh, women, but uh, at the end, they told us uh, that they were very surprised from uh, uh, the results and the commitment that we saw. It was something like uh, that uh, they didn't expect from a woman team, uh, but I think that when we made uh, the start and uh, the next one uh, would find an easier place uh, to promote their work. Thank you very much, uh, Sofia. Are there any questions for Sofia from the floor in the audience? Okay. Uh, Thank you. Just, uh, just uh, a short uh, question from me. Um, you, what kind of uh, services or products do you offer uh, to these uh, uh, research partners you just mentioned uh, up to now, industrial pa partners yes you uh, mentioned, uh, three contracts with mm -hmm. industrial partners just to understand because you said you don't have a product line yet so yes. you offer some kind of services it's uh, about uh, research services and uh, for instance the one is uh, one of the biggest companies for the production of fertilizers and we developed some uh, formulas of uh, slow release uh, innovative uh, fertilizers. Uh, the other contract is uh, it was about um, uh, the energy efficiency in a production line in a um, fruit processing company. So we made uh, the study about uh, the energy flows and uh, uh, find solutions and uh, propose some scenarios to minimize the energy consumption. And uh, the third uh, is about the development of uh, innovative, uh, mild um, uh, uh, processed food products. Uh, we focus on fru fresh fruits and vegetables, and we developed uh, some uh, uh, innovative uh, processes. And I would like to say that uh, uh, this work 
about the mild processing uh, of fruit and vegetables starts from Science Agora. We were funded uh, with our idea Fresh It in the previous cycle of uh, Science Agora. And uh, through uh, this project, we gain uh, this uh, opportunity uh, to collaborate uh, with uh, an industry and uh, develop uh, the product. Science Agora was the, the first step and we proceed after that with an, an individual uh, contract. So, uh, Sophia, thank you very much. And we hope, we're sure, that we're going to see you thrive <laughs> in the next thank years. You. So, our next speaker, I know we're running out of time, but we have interesting things still to, to, to say and present, is Olivia Kojeva, which uh, uh, she, she founded uh, Sin Fab Lab, which is the first mobile fab lab in Greece that focuses on educating and co-creating culture and site-specific projects. Uh, so, Olivia, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, just share this. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, is it big enough? How do you see it? I, I, don't, I don't see what you Can see. You... So... Yes, that's better. Okay. Like that? Yes. Yes. That's okay. Good. Thank you. Right. Uh, sorry, I cannot change it like this. Sorry. If, is it okay if I keep it like that? Because it doesn't let me change the, the slides. If I. It's okay. It's it's okay. Yes. okay. Right. So um, my name is uh, Olivia. I have uh, studied architecture and uh, worked as an architect and designer for five years before joined the, the academia. Uh, as a senior lecturer in 2009, so I was, um, uh, I was uh, teaching and researching at Cardiff Metropolitan University. And my research field since then um, is makerspaces, innovation and creative spaces. Um, more precisely, I was looking at uh, fabrication laboratories, the so-called uh, fab lab. Um, so fab labs are some of you may, may know this stuff already, but uh, just in case, um, well, I'm sure others won't. Um, so fab labs are um, small scale workshops offering um, access to tools uh, in order to develop ideas and products that one may want to do. Um, it started in the Center of Bits and Atoms in MIT in the, in the US as a, as a course in the university. Um, its popularity, um, um, it, it, went, it went popular so, so soon uh, then that they, they saw the need to, to have such spaces um, outside the university. So um, one thing led to another. And since 2001, when the first Fab Lab was, um, uh, was established in MIT, uh, we now have more than 2,500 labs worldwide. So it, it's it's like it's a culture of um, a do-it-yourself kind of culture, and the the aim is to democratize access to modern means of technology. So it's open to the public. Um, it's the opposite of mass manufacturing. It's uh, it's more about prototyping or making the end product like bespoke kind of end product or batch productions. Um, and uh, right now, yeah, we can we can see Fab Labs um, in more than one, 100 countries around the world. Uh, what's interesting is that uh, like everywhere, you don't you don't see that many women in this sector. Uh, it doesn't just involve people working with um, digital fabrication tools, which are tools that are controlled by computers. Um, it, it also involves working with hand tools, uh, but working also with software, with uh, programming, with electronics, things like that. So uh, somehow we are missing what we were talking earlier about uh, the role models in, this, in these sectors. Um, and yeah, I'll come back to that. So, um, so right now, uh, so I started. I, I started with my. I, I founded my first fab lab in two thousand and nine in Cardiff, um, when there were still sixty labs in the world, um, and 
slowly from places where you would go and fabricate things, you know, just use the machines, they, they became places where you can, you can create, you can invent, you can learn, you can innovate, and you can meet up with like-minded people from different types of fields. So, so Fab Labs provide access to tools, um, different types of tools, uh, software, skills so they have people there to, to teach you or to exchange ideas exchange knowledge and different materials and advanced technology to to allow you to make the so-called uh, motto of them and uh, how to make almost uh, anything so uh, so in the lab typically you would find um the same machines in order to be able to exchange uh, data, so exchange files rather than exchanging products uh, in order to, to have less carbon footprint as well as other stuff. Uh, so this is a typical lab. This is what, what a lab would look like. This is a lab um, from uh, Iceland. Um, and so, yeah, this was my research for many years. This is I, I was teaching around that. I was teaching around open design, co-creation, co-fabrication and co-design. And when I came back to Greece after 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 many years of being abroad, something like twenty four years, I decided to to start my own. So my own lab in Greece is also a fab lab. It's part of the community, and it's a, it's a, the first mobile lab in Greece. Um, it it brings it it has the the global knowledge that we all share with the other labs, but it. Um, but it somehow uh, translates it into into local needs, um, and 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 it tries to to adapt it to the local culture every time. Um, so here is what what the lab has. So first of all, it has a van where everything goes inside. Uh, so we are talking about design software tools and computers. Uh, it has a 3D printer, uh, three laser cutters, small enough in order to fit in, in, in the van or in a car, CNC machines, vinyl cutters, 3D scanners, like machines that you would normally uh, be able to, to control by a computer, uh, electronics, uh, programming tools, hand tools, of course, um, uh, AI, AI software, VR, VR stuff. So all this is just... Um, to, to go to places, um, use the pop-up uh, lab and, and mainly educate. Um, so the, the whole idea about, um, you know, interacting with people and, and the values around it come from the sustainable development goals. So uh, the, the projects are either contextualized or inspired by by the the seventeen sustainable development goals, and this is something I I was invited to talk about in the in the Geneva Forum uh, twice in the past. Like how how can how can the goals to get how can the goals be linked to the, to education through uh, places like uh, like maker spaces or fab labs or things like that. Um, so uh, the educational, mainly the educational, but also the practical part of the lab refers to the goals, like, like we said, uh, but it also refers to the 21st century skills, which is what we would call the soft skills um, and also the computational thinking. So starting from um, SDG number 12, which is the responsible production and consumption, we move on slowly to other clusters of, of goals. And, and this is how um like educationally this is this is how the, the start of a let's say a workshop would be uh the services that we provide are um are, are three types so it's either hands-on workshops using the machines um in different places depending on on where on where we go each time they are bespoke because they are very relate very much related to the place where we go they are inspired by the sustainable development goals and and they are adapted to the tailored to the age group that we have each time. Um, the second thing we do is um, consulting on SDGs, and that's not just for uh, ed ed educational purposes, but it's for uh, 
uh, organization and companies. So uh, we help apply the um, the relevant SDGs to the day-to-day -day operations of a, of a company. And the third thing we do is um, uh, curriculum design. So uh, we either co-create the, the curriculum with universities or schools, um, or I make activities that are kind of, you know, ready made and designed for the schools to, uh, or the libraries or other educational institutions to, to use. So, uh, as I said, we, we, I didn't say it. I, um, I remember I, we started uh, two years ago, basically, um, three years ago. So the first two years, it was just curriculum design for uh, different places, mainly abroad. Uh, and just uh, the last one year we've been to, we've been to these places, like places in Greece and places in um, either online or, or physically uh, abroad. Uh, COVID didn't help very much. Uh, but yeah, so so it was only last year where when we could um, travel. Uh, like very quickly, I'm not going to take up too much time. Um, some projects that we we've uh, been part of. This is like a U in EU and uh, Horizon 2020 project, which was about um, empower the empowerment of uh, of um, women in um, innovation and sustainable fashion. And I was mostly, from my point of view, I was looking at it, um, I, I was I was referring to the future women. So I was referring to girls, because I think we can impact, we can have a, a greater impact if we, if we uh, focus on uh, younger ages. So I'm part of like a big community now that operates uh, throughout Europe. Uh, Curriculum design, like workshops can vary like from three hour workshops where you would have like a step by step um, uh, um, instructions uh, where we would actually make things together to something else like uh, an autonomous learning type of uh, instructions where you know, you know exactly what sustainable development goal you are reaching, what 21st century skills you are are applied to this kind of thing and the step by step guide so that you you are totally autonomous if you want to without uh, an educator without a teacher without a librarian uh, nobody to help you so if you want you can actually do that as well um so this was applied to a lot of uh, schools and libraries abroad and it's um and it's working very well so far um also um demonstrating how the machines work and what they are um, many girls are really interested in that and and i'm quite glad to see that um, and it's also teaching teachers many times um, i'm very much in love with nature so i try to make um, to make as many workshops as i can outside so that I'm, I'm quite fortunate because of them all the machines i have i can actually operate them or operate them uh, outdoors um like different types of uh, things uh depending on where i go and what and, and what to do so the the ones on the right are like um connecting new technologies with uh with uh, local materials so with traditional skills uh, and the one on the left is talking about the li life underwater and uh, making uh, fish with with kids and having to uh, to know the rules of the game of uh, you know what we can fish and when and how many fish and you know overfishing things like that so it was like a, a game give a game in a way uh, to learn about the goal um uh, yeah that was that was um in 2022 and it was about uh, the challenges that future women innovators have and maybe we can talk extensively in another another time about this uh, because that was really interesting because there were uh, people women and men that came from different uh, fields different uh, industries and talked about the challenges they face um different types of activities that you would find uh, us doing in different places depending on where we go and um, the impact that we had so far was um, we managed to read in in this short time and i have to say i'm mainly by, by myself so 
I'm really looking for collaborators here. Um, like I made, uh, like the, the numbers here uh, are the, acti the new activities, like bespoke stuff that I had to do. Um, but I managed to reach quite a lot of kids uh, in a year, uh, educators, but also professionals and companies uh, and the public as well. Um, the, the activities for the future so far are uh, companies, so I'm going to, to do some consult, consulting uh, work on SDGs. Uh, there's two festivals. One is actually this Saturday, it's the Global Live Med. It's um, a music festival and SDG festival. It's in uh, Lipas Matendra Petsona, if anybody wants to have a look. Uh, and there's the Make Innovation Festival, which brings together all uh, maker spaces, fab labs uh, for a big conference in, um, in March next year. Um, so yeah, it's like planned activities. Um, and I hope I didn't take too much time. Um, and I would really love to, to collaborate if anybody is interested in, um, in getting in touch and talking about this type of things. So thank you very much. Thank you, Olivia. You gave us a very good idea about what uh, these kind of labs, fab labs are. And um, I think your presentation uh, is very much related uh, to what uh, Sophia has to, to tell us in the next presentation, because uh, you, you, you're both uh, talking about education and skills and soft skills in particular. Uh, one thing I would like to ask you, Olivia, uh, is um, you talked about curriculum design for educational institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, which uh, are, are this in Greece at least? Are there schools? Yes. So, so uh, I've either um, created activities from scratch um, that teachers can use in in classrooms without necessarily using machines that I have and they don't. So things that you can find in the, in the classroom, like what, what could you do with what you have here right now in order to um, incorporate, let's say, mathematics or history or any type of, of uh, course uh, the teacher would teach to, to a playful, like a soft skill development or an SDG related uh, material. Uh, so I either do that and I and I offer it as as a, a package, let's say, or we co-create it, which is more interesting because I learn I learn a lot and I learn you know the way they um, it's it's a more bespoke kind of thing. So we either co-create it or or I, um, I or I write and provide uh, the ready-made activities, like um, these these type of activities that I showed before. They are already. Um, uh, they, they are already exist in, uh, they, they are running, I, um, I, what I wanted to say, they are already running in schools in different countries like uh, Belgium, Holland, Sweden, uh, and Qatar, and it's already in, in Denmark. Uh, this is like a, an oldish uh, slide. So, so yeah, it's like um, the, for, the, for the activities that were made from scratch and they can be used by kids in schools and libraries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any uh, questions for uh, Olivia? So if not, we are uh, going to come to our last uh, presenter, who is uh, Sophia Kantziu. Sophia, thank you very much for your great patience. Hello. Uh, she's uh, co-founder of St Stimuli for Social Change. Uh, stimuli uh, designs and implements innovative educational uh, programs, and Sophia is going to talk to us more about this. Thank you. Hello, hello to all. Thank you very much for this invitation. Um, let me share my screen, please. I will try to be very short because I know we are much over our time.
it seems that I have a problem with sharing just a minute. Um, it seems that there is an error. Um, it says that I'm not allowed it to share content for some reason. Sorry for keeping you waiting. No we can no, we can display your share content. Make sure that you are allowed permission to share content. You want to send us the presentation to We have the we ah, have the presentation. Yeah. <laughs> Unless there's something I can do. Yes, uh, perhaps we can. Uh, I can share my my screen. Maybe now you can see oh, my screen. Yes, yes. we can see your yes. screen. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, so, my name is Sofia Cantu. I'm uh, one of the three co founders um, of the nonprofit research organization Stimuli for Social Change. Uh, we um, can see your screen, sorry to interrupt you, but we yeah. can't see your presentation. Really? Maybe needs more time? Yes. No. This is strange. Maybe you could uh, share uh, your screen, please, because yes. the error is persistent. Can you uh, see my screen? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. Sorry for this. No problem. Okay. <laughs> um, can we move on the next slide, please? Yes. Yeah. I will try to be very quick. Um, okay, uh, our journey began back in 2017 uh, when myself, uh, Irene and Ioana um, it's with uh, more than 10 to 15 years of uh, experience in the business consulting sector, uh, shared uh, the same passion to work on projects with social impact, and also shared uh, common concerns on how to succeed uh, uh, work-life balance as well. Um, then we had, uh, let's say, the vision to uh, to inspire future education and uh, try to uh, promote social innovation within classrooms, within universities, so as to try and empower uh, young people, uh, build uh, the skills needed to uh, build a, a better world. Next slide, please. Yes. yes sorry. Um, a little more words on how did we get to this point. Um, can we move on, please? Yes, the other one, please. Okay. Um, acknowledging that um, education is uh, the main driver to change the world, our constant live on the world. Um, and uh, trying to address the multiple challenges that the educational system is currently facing, uh, such as the need to support the teachers' lifelong learning, um, the fact that uh, children entering right now primary school uh, will choose uh, uh, professions in the future that do not exist today, 
So we are working on reshaping education and try to build those soft skills, those 21st century skills uh, that are needed in order to succeed. Um, can we move on, please? The next one, please. I will try to be more quick, sorry. Okay, what do we do? Um, so we are trying to respond to these needs, to the need to uh, reshape education and how we provide education to young people. Uh, so we design and develop uh, educational programs for children and young people that aim to develop both soft and technical skills of the 21st century in a more experiential way. Um, we also plan, implement, evaluate, assess training programs that are addressed to teachers and uh, university educators, and also conduct multi-level research around uh, social innovation, sustainability, and education in general. Um, our work is carried out through EU-funded pro programs such as Horizon and Erasmus+. Plus. Can we move on, please? Thank you. Uh, eventually now, we are a team of uh, 13 people uh, coming from uh, various backgrounds, um, from political science, uh, finance, environmental studies. Uh, can we move on? <laughs> Thank you, I'm sorry. The next slide, please. The next one, I will try to be very quick. Okay, uh, our work so far uh, from 2017, those uh, six years, uh, we have been implementing more than 60 uh, transnational projects around Europe and Africa as well. Um, we have been collaborating with uh, more than 80 schools, uh, 2,000 uh, primary and secondary students, uh, also more than 300 uh, university students and over 1,000 uh, teachers and professors. Um, can we go on? Okay. Um, all of our projects are cross-disciplinary. Uh, uh, focusing on areas like uh, green skills, sustainability, digital skills, creativity, um, and as well women empowerment. Um, if we move on to the next slides, I will just be uh, very quick to go to the last slides and try to tell you some things about uh, four of our projects that focus on uh, women empowerment. So if we move on to the end, I can say some things. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, next one here. Okay. So um, the We for Jade project. Uh, aims to empower girls and young women to develop uh, their digital and innovation skills. How did we do that? We uh, designed and uh, uh, implemented 14 uh, change maker hackathon events in all partner countries around Europe, uh, where uh, more than uh, 100 girls participated and co designed their solutions to their community environmental projects, uh, problems, sorry. Uh, we also uh, created a training program for youth workers and mentors, and uh, the We for Change platform that uh, aims to support uh, girls develop their uh, solutions and build their community. Um, next, we have uh, the Women's Stem Up project, which is still in progress. Um, that aims to promote the participation of women in STEM fields uh, by offering them uh, training tools uh, so, uh, so as to scale up their potential of their studies. Um, how are we doing this? We are currently uh, developing a training uh, virtual program for uh, lecturers so as to offer examples that can be used in their teaching in STEM areas, of course. 
and uh, we are also designing right now the leadership academy so as to offer mentoring uh, and access to women step professionals that will be their mentors and finally we will uh, create uh, the women's STEM up for good program that will encourage uh, female university students um, uh, create uh, their own projects uh, in STEM areas they are working on. Um, the next project is the Feminicity City project that um, uh, aimed to encourage more women to uh, follow ICT related careers and uh, we provided tools and uh, direct support and motivation to women to pursue a career in the ICT economy and also designed uh, a gender equality training program addressed to employers uh, in the ICT sector. And the final one is the NFEM project that is also currently running um, that aims to support the integration of women third country, country nationals in their local communities um, by better matching uh, the skills and demands in, uh, within the labor markets. So how are we doing this uh, after an in-depth analysis of the current situation? and uh, developing uh, a training package for migrant women to motivate them and improve their skills and capacities to enter the labor market. And finally, we created an online platform that uh, will uh, work as a bridge uh, between the women, the migrant women and uh, the local labor stakeholders. So if anyone wants more uh, information about our projects on women empowerment, please go ahead. Uh, on our website, you can find uh, much more details and the project websites as well. Um, that's it for me. Thank you very much for your attention. And th thank you for sharing your screen. <laughs> Sophia, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for sharing uh, with us uh, your very interesting uh, venture. It seems you're doing lots of things uh, and it seems that you are also having uh, lots of projects oriented to empowering women. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, and, and different, uh, different uh, types of um, different groups of women immigrants uh, uh, yes um, university students uh, young girls yes um, we are also targeted very much to uh, to support teachers and uh, university educators on how to promote women empowerment yes and wh what would you say about uh, soft skills how how do you understand soft skills and why are important, especially in my view, in also in, in STEM uh, fields from your experience? Yeah, um, soft skills are uh, highly important, especially in STEM, I would say, because uh, in STEM, as I see it, it's very difficult to, to take action, to go and to take the initiative to start up a business. And uh, soft skills, I think, are missing from STEM studies in order to, uh, to build confidence and uh, have uh, to take the initiative to, to go and uh, start up new initiatives uh, uh, focusing on STEM. Thank you. Thanks, Sophia. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, I ask uh, something. Yes, Panagiotis, go on. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, how were you motivated to start the startup? Um, okay, we we had uh, a lot of uh, many years of working experience. 
And uh, as I said, we were working mostly in the business sector, but uh, we had some experience working in projects with educational aspects and we were highly motivated to try uh, and focus only on uh, the field of education. Um, of course, the fact that we were uh, all uh, mothers <laughs> gave us the motivation to try and make things better, uh, receive, uh, receive the education that we want for our children. And um, it was very important that uh, we were a team, a team of three women, and we saw that we have uh, skills that, uh, uh, that complement each other. So uh, it was very important that we were uh, a team of three people that, uh, that had uh, the initiative to uh, combine those skills and try to make it happen. Yeah. So women are the power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as we are way ahead of our time, I would like to thank you all for your patience and for your participation here because you made this event very, very interesting and I hope inspiring for our students. So thank you all for your uh, participation and very interesting and stimulating presentations. If uh, anyone uh, would like, uh, is there anyone? No. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.